In this video, we're going to have a look at finding the Taylor series for 3x squared times e to the x cubed in two different ways. Both ways start by using the basic Taylor series for e to the x, which we know is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial and so on and on forever. Make sure that you know this, and also make sure that you know the Taylor series for cosine of x and sine of x, because those will definitely come up. You should just know them off by heart. Okay, so going back to our Taylor series for e to the x, we don't really want that in the question that we're looking at. We're interested in e to the x cubed. But what we can do is we can replace every x that we see in our e to the x Taylor series with x cubed. So then what we're going to get is an e to the x cubed is equal to 1 plus x cubed plus x cubed all squared over 2 plus x cubed all cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 3 all to the 4 over 4 factorial, and we'll keep going. And if we just write that out a little bit more neatly, we've got 1 plus x cubed plus x to the 6 over 2 plus x to the 9 over 3 factorial plus x to the 12 over 4 factorial, and so on and on. Now, the first way of getting our Taylor series for our f of x is to just notice that really what we want is we want 3x squared times e to the x cubed. So what we can do is we can just multiply our Taylor series that we found over here by 3x cubed. So this is our, our method 1 we're going to multiply by 3x squared. So if we do that, then we get 3x squared e to the x cubed is 3x squared times our 1 plus x cubed plus x to the 6 over 2 plus x to the 9 over 3 factorial plus, and I'm not going to write any more terms, and if we simplify that, then we get 3x squared plus 3x to the 5 plus three x to the 8 over 2 plus three x to the 11 over 3 factorial and so on. So that's the first method that we've had a look at getting our Taylor series for 3x squared e to the x cubed. But there's another way that we could find by noting that if we take the derivative of e to the x cubed, then we get 3x squared e to the x cubed, which is the function that we were interested in. So this tells us that if we take, take the derivative of our Taylor series e to the x cubed, then we should get the Taylor series for 3x squared e to the x cubed. So if we go ahead and do that, we get that 3x squared e to the x cubed is equal to, now I'm taking the derivative of each term along here, derivative of 1 is 0, derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, derivative of x to the 6 is 6x to the 5 over 2, the next term is going to be 9x to the 8 over 3 factorial, and we're going to carry on going. Now we might have an initial look and say, hmm, 
Okay, these two are not quite the same, so we've got a 3x squared and a 3x squared, but now we've got a 3x to the fifth and a 6x to the fifth, but notice that we can divide through by 2 and that gives us a 3, so that's okay. And a quick check, we've got a 3x to the 8 over 2 for our first method. For our second method, note that 3 factorial is really 3 times 2 times 1, so if we cancel our 3 with our 9, then we end up with a 3x squared over 2. So we get the same answer for both. So that just shows that there are different ways of getting the Taylor series. Firstly, you don't always have to go ahead and do the whole taking the derivative thing. If you know your basic Taylor series, you can use replacement to get a more complicated version and then either multiply by terms to get what you want or take the derivative. And although we didn't look at it in this example, you could also integrate if you wanted to.